Hey guys, Phil with Royal Range USA here in Nashville, Tennessee. So today we're talking about, you guessed it, Remington TAC-14 with an arm brace. Now this is kind of a game changer when it comes to these kind of shockwave style, you know, either Mossberg shockwave or the TAC-14 uh, with a bird's head grip. And what we're gonna talk about really is kind of um, some of the legalities of having one of these with a shockwave and what your, some of your options are. And um, some of the new features of this one. The TAC-14 has been out there forever, guys, and it's a pretty common gun. Um, super popular in 2017 and, and still seems to be a, a big top seller here in 2018. Now, what's different about this one, besides the brace, is it does have an extra round capacity in your magazine tube, which I really like. Um, besides that, it's all pretty much the same and we won't spend too much time on it. Getting towards the back of the gun, is where we really get into some cool differences. Now, disclaimer guys, I'm not a lawyer and this isn't legal advice and so don't take it as such. This is just some of my opinions and some of um, what I've read in regard to some of the legalities of owning one of these guns and how this is not a shotgun or pistol. So let's address that now. What's really interesting is this isn't a shotgun and it's not a pistol. It's actually classified as a firearm specifically a pistol grip only firearm. Now with a firearm, one of the characteristics of a firearm is it has to have a longer overall length of 26 inches. And that's what allows your plain Jane, and you can, I'll have Colleen look down at the table here. This is, we have kind of your plain J TAC 14 up front. Everything's unloaded. With your bird's head pistol grip here, the overall length is actually 26 and I think a half inches or something like that, just over that 26 inch mark. Obviously the overall length of the TAC-14 with the brace is over the 26 inches. So that allows this to be classified as a firearm, meaning you don't have to do a $200 tax stamp or even a $5 tax stamp for any other weapon and have that waiting period for it to be an NFA item. This is a right off the shelf, this is right off the shelf product that you can buy over the counter dependent on your state. Now, what's cool about this is this is this particular model is a Remington, Remington SKU. It's straight from the factory. The factory ships it with this Mesa or Mesa, whatever you want to call it or however you want to pronounce it, Ho grip, pistol tube, and this is an SB Tactical SBM4 arm brace. Now, the reason this doesn't turn into a short barreled shotgun is because of intent. And intent is important when it comes to how these manufacturers classify and build these. This being a pistol grip only firearm, its intent is to only have a pistol grip. This is not a stock, this is an arm brace. So the intent when this was manufactured was to be shot pistol grip only and this to be utilized as an arm brace. Now, we all know, and uh, it's been kind of back and forth, but the ATF letters indicate that it is no longer a felony or intent to manufacture a short-barreled rifle or short-barreled shotgun if you shoulder this brace. So all that being said, I know that's very complicated, but I wanna just get the raw information out there. What's cool about this is it's a very, very short package in 12 gauge. You have a five plus one capacity, and this thing's an absolute thumper. Uh, it's, pre it's pretty cool. Great util it could be really a great tool for a car gun or a truck gun, a home defense gun. Um, so it's a pretty neat design. You do have QD cups on either side of this particular model. Now you may ask your, yourself the question or you may ask, uh, just kind of raise a question, well what if I already have one of these? What if I already have a shockwave or I already have a TAC-14? that has this bird's head grip and you wanna to go to something um, that has an arm brace on it. SB Tactical is manufacturing a conversion kit. It's for the 590 Shockwave and for the TAC-14. And let's talk price here. The conversion kit from SB Tactical is gonna sell around that $200 mark. The TAC-14s are selling around the $380, $400 mark. And the Remington with the brace from the factory is selling for around the $600 mark. So it's pretty similar, it's around that $200. So if you're wanting to do a brace um, on one of these TAC-14s or these shockwaves, it's gonna be around a $200 difference from just the plain Jane. 
So I think that's about it, guys. What we're gonna do is we're gonna test some different rounds through it. What we have is the mini shells. So this is one of the, the biggest questions is mini shells because what's cool about these is it gives you, I think an eight plus one or a nine plus one capacity in the shotgun. Um, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, guys, we tried them, they didn't work too well. They're, they're inconsistent. It will cycle, but it, it's not something I would recommend. Um, then we have just standard game load. This is number eight shot, um, works really well. We have a slug by Federal and then we have a uh, managed recoil buckshot by uh, Remington here. So what we're gonna do is a normal routine, guys. We're gonna get our Eye and Ear Pro, go down range, and uh, see how this thing kind of patterns on some of these targets. So see you in a second. All right, guys, let's load this thing up and uh, shoot it a little bit, see how this thing patterns. So one thing I did wanna mention before we actually get shooting is there is a little bit of difference between the braces that are from the factory and then the ones that are coming from SB Tactical. Just, I, I haven't seen the SB Tactical in person, but just the picture that they, they have online, it shows a little bit more of a tilt on your brace here, which would probably give you a, a better hold for, for your front bead, but it's not gonna be as high. So if you're ever planning on running like a, like a red dot or something, this particular one is not drilled and tapped for a rail on top, so you would probably have to have that done. Maybe inc inc inconsequential, but it's just something I noticed. All right, so let's load this thing up. We're gonna start with some regular bird shot. This is two and three quarters, um, number eight. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right off the bat, guys, this is not a, a fun gun to shoot. It's got quite the kick to it, which is to be expected from a 12 gauge, especially when you start getting into the slugs and some of those different ones. So that's five rounds, and we'll just shoot the five. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a bird shot on one target, buck on the other, and then we're gonna shoot both the mini shells and the two and three quarter inch slugs on one, just so we can kind of see how it patterns. All right, Let's see how this thing goes. Oop, safety on. So, kicks like a mule, but it works pretty well. The brace uh, does a good job. It's not super uncomfortable, but it's like shooting a, a shorter barrel 12 gauge. It's gonna have some kick to it. So let's move over. I think this pocket has got the buckshot on it. It does. So let me grab it out of my pocket. We'll load this thing up. Two, three, Four, and I got one more in my pocket. Oops. Okay, here we go, five rounds. So five rounds of buckshot. All right, safety off. Okay. Now we're gonna go to the mini shells. So I got ammo in all types of pockets, so I gotta find what we need. So now let's go to the mini shells. Now we've had some problems with the mini shells not feeding reliably, and we talked about that. Now I don't expect these to, to work with 100% of reliability, but um, we'll, we'll see. We'll just test it out and see how it does. Now this is eight in the tube, so you have eight rounds. That's the ninth, and we'll just put that in the pocket. Now let's see how this does. That one loaded just fine. We'll see how the other ones load here. See, so that's where you're gonna have start having problems. When the shells come in, they can kind of top up or even flip over because they're shorter. Obviously this is designed to shoot a two and three quarter inch shell and you kind of run into some difficulties. That's an example. So it kind of just pops up like that. And then you can kind of wiggle it around and you can get it into the chamber. All right, so some inconsistencies with that. And let's finish it up with some two and three quarter inch slug. Enable that. Two more. All right. All right. 
So <laughs> it's got some flame, it's got some sound, it's got some kick. It's a pretty cool gun. Let's go check out the target. So birdshot is kind of what you would expect, guys. Um, shoot number eight, pretty good patterns here. Keeps it all pretty close. It looks like one big hole for your, your buckshot here. Um, all your groupings got in there pretty close. And the same thing with your slugs. So, and you can, this is, um, I know there's no way to guarantee this, but this is actually a Nagila. I kind of watched where the Aguilas hit, and that's Nagila, and that's your, your full size. So, as far as the way it shoots, it's pretty fun. It's a pretty cool shotgun. I think it's really applicable for a home defense type situation or a, a truck gun. Very short, very compact, very easy to kind of maneuver in and out of a vehicle or around a house, and definitely has its niche. So pretty cool offering straight from Remington, TAC 14 with an arm brace on it. Be sure to let us know how you guys would use this or, or what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, this is Philip with Royal Range. Be sure to like and subscribe to our other videos. We really appreciate it. Have a great day.